Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Let me at the outset, Mr. Chairman, bring greetings and apology of the chairperson who is unable to join us here because of some commitment that she was not able to delegate. She, however, and I should assure you that uh, even when she has not been with us here physically, she has been following very closely the proceedings of PRC and has continued to guide all the developments behind the scenes. Your Excellency, Mr. Layuya Abdullah, Chairperson of the Permanent Representatives Committee. Your Excellencies, members of the Permanent Representatives Committee, my colleagues, Commissioners of the African Union, and the representatives and chief executives of our organs and other staff members who are here, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the chairperson, Our Excellency Kozazan Lamin Zuma, it is a distinct honor for me to address you at the start of the 29th ordinary session of the Permanent Representative Committee. A special welcome to those that have joined us from the capitals and a special recognition of those ambassadors that are attending the PRC formally for the first time. I salute you and wish you all a prosperous 2015 and successful policy organs meetings. You have as in the past, a crowded agenda that spans all areas of our union endeavors. You are all, as the clearing house and the preparatory body for the meetings of the policy organs of the African Union, is not only important in itself, but is also vital for the success of the meetings of the higher policy organs. The more adequate your preparations are, working together with the Commission, the greater the success of the meetings of the Executive Council and those of the Assembly of the African Union Heads of State and Government. The PRC and the Commission are therefore, literally speaking, the foundation stones for the African Union, the more effectively we work together, the stronger the foundation. Excellencies, in his synthesis report of the post-2015 development agenda entitled The Road to Dignity by 2030, Ending Poverty, Transforming All Lives and Protecting the Environment, the Secretary General of the United Nations refers to the year 2015 as being a historic crossroads. And for us in Africa, destiny has brought us to these crossroads where we can no longer afford the time for missed opportunities, nor the luxury of multiple choices. We must move only in one direction and that is upwards. And we must do so with the resolute determination to succeed. For a long time since our independence, Africa has inexorably sucked downwards into vortex of poverty, disease, despair, ignorance, and squalor. We became the continent that others did derisively referred to as the hopeless continent. However, in the last decade or so, the tide started to change as Africa has begun to rebrand itself and has transformed its image as that of a next frontier for development and prosperity. This progress has been expressed in terms of the expanding realm of peace and stability, the growth and consultation of democracy, 
good governance, human rights and respect for rule of law, as well as economic growth averaging 5% per annum that the continent has witnessed over the decade. We should not, however, be lured into laxity and a false sense of comfort. We are still far from reaching the commanding heights and the powerful winds are still blowing in our face. Our continent is still plighted by conflicts. Poverty is still widespread. Disease and ignorance are still prevalent. And far too many of our young people remain unemployed. Industrial capacity of the continent is low, partly due to limited intercontinental infrastructure, fragmented markets, and inadequate skills. We continue to lose too many of our people who, out of despair, seek to cross dangerous seas in search of opportunity in Europe. Even for those who make it, many find themselves victims of abuse, drugs, prostitution, human trafficking, and all manner of indignities feasted upon them. There is much to do and no much to time to waste. That's why this year, Africa must fight to ensure that its voice is heard and its interested, interests safeguarded during the intergovernmental negotiations on the post-2015 development agenda and on the ongoing negotiations on climate change. That's why it's important to launch the African Agenda 2063 as a framework at this summit and proclaim to the whole world that Africa has come of age and also to implement what and the wishes and aspirations of our people. Consultations on the first 10-year implementation plan for Agenda 2063 will have been completed by June and the adoption of the plan by June-July summit which will also signal the beginning of Africa's march towards its destiny as an integrated, prosperous, and peaceful continent driven by its own citizens and representing a dynamic force in the global arena. I repeat, Excellencies, there is no time to waste. We need to act now and take the difficult decisions that need to be taken to put Africa on solid foundation towards self-propelled, sustainable, and irreversible progress. While the rest of the world may count their future in terms of decades, Africa's future is now. It is now that we must decide on how to finance our own development using our own resources. It is now we must move forward to implement our flagship projects, including the continental free trade area, the railway, the Yamasukura decisions to ease air travel within Africa and save our fledging aviation industry from collapsing. In the future, we see there will be no external benefactors that will routinely come to our rescue during moments of our greatest need. In the future, we see a private sector willing and ready to sacrifice and do whatever it takes to sustain Africa's development to fight for Africa's space in the competitive international economy. It will be a private sector that we shall grow ourselves. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as you are aware, we are just concluding the year of agriculture, during which period important strides have been made in reaffirming our commitments, internalizing lessons learned under the comprehensive Africa agricultural development on what needs to be done as we strive to revitalize and modernize the critical sector to Africa's food and nutrition security and development. There is discernible growth in investment in agriculture and expansion in, an, in output. The African risk capacity is also now operational. We are proclaiming this year as the year of women, as the year of women empowerment, 
because of the urgent need to address the issues relating to the status of women in Africa and the critical role women can play in the survival and development of our continent. In so doing, we hope to galvanize energies, actions, advocacy, resources and policy focus to achieve concrete measurable targets. This will also enable Africa to plan together and prepare adequately for the Beijing Plus 20 Global Conference on the Status of Women. In November 2013, when the chairperson addressed you, she indicated that it was our intention to focus our efforts in 2014 on institutional reforms of the Commission. The process has been ongoing. In this regard, the Commission has worked hard to improve corporate governance and accountability, improve performance delivery, enhance financial sustainability, and improve our stakeholder management. Some of the key areas worth noting are review and introduction of key policies including travel policy, enterprise risk policy, fraud and anti-corruption policy, and the code of ethics and anti-harassment. Furthermore, we are looking at updating, strengthening, and tightening staff rules and various operational manuals to ensure that we create a conducive work environment for performance delivery. We have also reconstituted management advisory bodies, including the grievances panel, the tribunal, and the training and capacity development committee. The comprehensive review of the institutional structure has been initiated with the purpose of transforming the commission into a full results-oriented institution capable of supporting and facilitating the continental integration and Agenda 2063. We hope to provide you with further details on this all-important exercise by June. In the area of financial management, new financial rules and regulations have been introduced, streamlined the use of financial resources. The IPSAS, which stands for International Public Service Accounting Standards, have also been introduced to ensure that financial management meets international standards of accountability and property. Our internal and external audit framework has also been reformed. Overall, there was marked improvement in budget implementation with the receipt of assessed contribution standing at 57%, including arrears, whereas execution stood at 59% on approved budget, but 81% against funds released. The establishment of the AU Foundation as a framework for mobilizing funds for continental development is also a key novelty. We are developing communications strategy to move to more effectively inform and engage our people about the programs and policies of the Union. We are also conducting a comprehensive analysis of other international intergovernmental institutions to learn best practices to seek to ensure that all organs of the Union operate effectively. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the foregoing are but just a few of the activities on the agenda that is before you. I cannot end the remarks, however, without referring to the work we have jointly and severally done to contain the Ebola crisis in Guinea, in Liberia, and Sierra Leone. It is not an exaggeration to say that Ebola is perhaps the greatest challenge that Africa has faced in the last decade. You will recall the worldwide panic and that followed the Ebola outbreak leading to closure of borders from some neighboring countries and travel bans, and or restrictions by many countries around the world against not only the citizens of these three countries, but also for those of the entire West Africa. The extraordinary Joint Executive Council of Ministers of Health meeting that convened 
that was convened by the AUC in September 2014 went a long way in calming the fears, stopping border closures, and relaxing travel restrictions for citizens from Ebola-affected countries. We established the African support to Ebola in West Africa, ASEWA, as a dedicated mechanism through which to coordinate all assistance and efforts in the fight against Ebola. We realized that the response to Ebola was slow and concentrated in building health infrastructure, apart from Cuba, which pledged health workers at the time, when few others did. We therefore decided that the AU should concentrate on mobilizing health workers as well as resources for deploying and supporting them in the field to assist the few available national workers on the affected, to the affected countries. Our business people heeded the call for help and at a meeting called by the Commission in November 2014, the business people pledged over 30 million US dollars to support the deployment of the more than 800 health workers currently deployed to the three countries affected under ASEOA. In this regard, we thank most sincerely all the countries and entities that have so generously contributed to the Ebola effort in the form of health workers and infrastructure, funding, equipment, solidarity, and advocacy. Equally, I would like to thank the business people, the artists, and the ordinary citizens who have contributed to the outbreak effort. I also want to salute and thank our volunteers, the health workers. These heroines and heroes epitomize the very best of our continent in coming together in solidarity to address common threats. Excellencies, while some progress has been made in containing the virus. Ebola is still very much with us, and the health institutional frameworks and the capacity remains fragile. We cannot relent in our fight against it. We cannot afford to let our guard down. I have no doubt, however, that working together, African governments, partners, the private sector, our citizens, we shall defeat Ebola. Allow me in conclusion by wishing you fruitful deliberations to just again remind ourselves the important decisions that we must make at this summit. We need to summon all our courage and political will to do the right thing. Shukran Gizira, Obrigado, Machos Gracias, Marisi Buku, Asante Sana, Amasegnaro, I thank you very much. <laughs>